All right, so let's dive in. So we want to get into some phone training and conversations around sales persuasion and influence. First off, five tips for phone mastery. We're going to start going fast, all right? These are the types of trainings that we do when you're in our mentorship program, when you're in our do deals with me community, when you're in our discord group, when you're in, when you, when you invest in the AI real estate system, these are the types of trainings that are in our online learning center. All right. So I'm going to go fast. First off, five tips for phone mastery, tonality. How important is tonality? Crucial. You, there's only two people on the phone call, right? So who's going to control the tone? Are you going to leave it up to them? They may be having a shitty day. So are you going to have a shitty day with them? So if you start turning up the corners of your mouth, I could say the exact same thing over and over. But when I turn up the corners of my mouth, you can actually hear that I'm smiling. So bring them out of their dark cloud, bring them into a happy place, get them into a position where they're open-minded. I use that term a lot where they're open-minded to discuss selling their home with you. Um, so tonality is everything. You have to control the call. Somebody has to, so it should be you. I, if I do this on the sales floor, it's not because I'm doing a Disneyland wave. I'm letting my staff know to keep upper hand. Don't let them railroad the phone call. Make sure that you're in control and make sure that you're leading them to a happy place, a motivated place where they want to do business with you. Right now, we're just talking about doing business. But if we get into a contract, we're actually doing business and it's always selling the next step. So tonality is everything. Yeah, and, and just so you guys know, tonality is just the modification of your tone of a person's voice. So if you're excited, you're gonna be smiling like Forrest said, and you're gonna be really ha happy and talking kind of high pitched. And then, you know, if, if you're, you're kind of serious and you wanna take it down a little bit, you're gonna lower your tone uh, and, and drop your, drop the tone of your voice. All right. I always like to mirror. Yeah. I'm I always like that. to mirror what the seller's tonality is mm -hmm. because sometimes they don't want a hype man. They just want a normal person that is on the end of the phone. So, you know, I love the bringing the energy side, but if they're monotone and they're not high energy, you're supposed to be mirroring them to have the best results in my experience. Yeah, true. So we Start off with mirroring. And if you can get them to be a little bit more motivated, a little bit more excited over the course of the call, utilizing your own tonality, that's gonna set yourself up for yeah. a win. Probably the best advice is just to go slow. In the beginning, slow it down. Yeah, you're, you're really, you're really just fast. supposed to build, build, build rapport and have them almost be a friend. You gotta keep yourself out of the friend zone because you are there to do business, but you're always gonna be able to leverage your higher authority. And that's why, hey, I don't get paid unless we get a deal done. I'm on your side. Just be, just be honest with, with me. Where, where was the, what's the mortgage looking like right now? What is the plan? If you were to sell this, what would happen? If you could wave, wave a magic wand, w tell me the story about what happens next, right? Because the more I can understand where you're at, I can figure out how to solve the problem. One of my other great friends, he calls it finding the bunny, right? Just figure out how to find out what the problem is and then solve the problem. Mm -hmm. So instead of worrying about, do you have a real estate license? Do you have a website? Figure out if you know how to solve somebody's problem and actually care enough to let them carry the conversation and talk. Because if you're talking, you're losing. So those are some quick you love pointers. It. You, you gotta really think about it like, you're a question asker -er. That's your job on the phones. Your job is not to be a solution provider in the beginning. Your job is to build rapport and extract information. How you sound credible, especially when you're new and you don't have a lot of credibility, is to slow down your pace. Think like at late night FM DJ. That's it. If you talk like a late night FM DJ, you're probably going to do pretty good. So slow it down. And by talking slowly, it, it, ma it makes you feel more credible even when you're new. Use your body language. Uh, when I first started, I actually wore a suit when I made my calls, even though I was in my house, even though it was 9 a.m. in the morning. And I just literally changed out of my PJs and I put on a suit. I had a mirror, a full length mirror in my office so I can see myself and I would catch myself every once in a while in the mirror, slumping over, making my calls two hours into the calls. And I would catch myself. I'd be like, ah, oh, come on, Sperber, roll your shoulders back, smile, talk through your eyes, smile through your eyes, talk through your teeth, bring, brings a little bit more energy to this. So that way, uh, 
it's coming across through the phone, mm -hmm. all right? Because body language, if you think about your physiology, a lot of, I, I recommend to a lot of my students, stand up. I'm a walker and a talker, so I like to pace around. Mm -hmm. Maybe you guys can relate. Maybe you get one of those little treadmills that go underneath your desk, so you're kind of moving and getting the, the nervous energy out while you're making your calls. And how we communicate, 7% is the words we use. Most of it is the tone of our voice and our physiology, right? So it makes a big difference. If you, all you do is like you're, you're making calls, but you're on the go and you're going through the grocery store checkout line or you're driving in your car and you're trying to have a real conversation with a real seller, what's our average wholesale profit? About 15. 15k per deal. It's increased. Yeah, we're we're yeah, we're 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 in the low 20s on the average right now. Okay, great. Yeah. If you had a phone call that was worth $20,000, should you take it serious? I mean, it's kind of a no-brainer. We're not selling Cutco knives. We're selling the number one biggest asset in a in a person's life. So, get your physiology down. Build rapport. This is another good tip. Build rapport through listening. Like I said, ask lots of great questions telling some stories, telling some secrets, and also master something called an artificial time constraint, all right? Nobody wants to be trapped on the phone with you forever, especially if it's phone calls two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, 10, 12. A lot of times I hear these guys, they get on the phone, they say, hey, John, uh, it's Forrest from Green Elephant Development. Hey, listen, real fast, I, I gotta run into a meeting here in two minutes, but I just had a couple extra questions that I gotta to ask you before I can go to my business partner and craft the perfect offer for you. You got a second? Right away, the guy's like, yes, right? Because he, he knows that in two minutes, Forrest is walking in to a meeting. What the guy doesn't know is Forrest is gonna talk to you for 15 more minutes and extract everything he needs out of you in order to dial this thing in. But he's open, he's willing because of those artificial time constraints, all right? Active listening is the, art of asking a great question. Sometimes you use their name, right? So you ask a question and then they're gonna give you an answer. Then you repeat it back to them. Sometimes you use their name during the repetition part, right? Hey, Forrest, so what you're telling me is, or Forrest, it seems like what you're trying to say is, or it feels like, right? And it's just, I would write these three things down. It seems like, it sounds like, it feels like. Because when, when you repeat to somebody, their response, but in your own words, and you start it off with, well, Forrest, it sounds like, or it feels like what you're trying to accomplish is this. Am I, am I right on that? They feel heard, they feel love, they feel connection, they feel rapport being built, all right? And then after you repeat it, you just stop talking again, and you let them go, yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Thanks for listening. Yeah, and now yeah. we're connected, and we can move on to the next step. All right, so volunteering information about yourself. Most of you guys are good storytellers. Most of you guys can memorize who you are and your little 30 second pitch and why you do what you do and how you do what you do and why they need to do it with you and what's in it for them if they do it with you and all that stuff. So uh, pros write stuff down, they memorize it. it this, this should not be, you're not winging things. You should write down your 30 second pitch. If I, if I ask you at a networking, event and I say, hey, da David Sylvester, David, man, good to meet you, brother. Uh, tell me about your business and what you got going on. If you can't clearly explain it in 30 seconds or less and you're rambling for eight minutes and we're all over the damn place and you can't even elaborate exactly what you do and how you do it and what's in it for me if I do it with you, then you failed. Right away, I'm mentally checked out because I wanna do deals with pros, business with pros, people that are serious about making money. What's the difference between an amateur and a pro? Pros make money. Amateurs fucking have a hobby. Like, I don't want to deal with people that have a hobby. I want to, do, I want to make money, and I want to make money fast, like yesterday. And so we have all our students write out their 30-second pitch and give them some examples and all that stuff so that way they can dial it in. All right. Uh, I don't want to go too much into this, but here's a couple sentences that will help you get into the telling secrets mode. Right? Like sometimes in the middle of a conversation, I might just, you know, call up the seller's name and say, look, I'm a little bit embarrassed to admit this, but my parents were in the same situation as you. They almost lost their home to foreclosure and things were falling behind, but thank God there are solutions out there that we were able to finagle together. And at the last minute, we stopped the foreclosure, saved the family home. 
I know the stress that you're feeling right now. I bet it's a lot, right? So it's like these little things that you practice doing during these phone calls bring, build rapport. Asking for help. If you are just talking at the seller, that's one type of relationship. But if you identify the gap and you transition to the same side of the table as the seller and you say, listen, how can we collaborate on solving this? And I, I actually, I use this a lot. Help me get there. Oh, that's right? a good so, one. Help me so get there. when I, for instance, I had a seller, this was in Southern California and he called up, he was going through a divorce. Wife's uh, ex-wife is still in the house. And he said, you know what? Just light makeup. It's all you need. And here's my asking price. And the asking price was way up here. And I said, I'm looking at the photos. Um, you know, I, I totally agree with where you're coming from, but I can't get to your price um, based on the condition. Help me get there. And basically what you're saying is, sell me the pen, mm -hmm. right? Help me get there. And this guy, I shut up. For 11 minutes, this guy went on a rant. And by the time he was done in 11 minutes, he went from starting with, it just needs a little light touch up, to in 11 minutes, he literally <laughs> said, yeah, you're right, it's a full gut. <laughs> I didn't say anything. I just let him go for 11 minutes. I said, help me get to that price. Yeah. By the time he was done selling me this property, he realized the only thing he had to sell was a full gut property. So we ended up getting the property tied up for the price that made sense. That's a good one. Uh, last tip, tip number five, don't focus on what they are saying. And this is important. Focus on the emotions that they're probably feeling and what they're most scared of. That last part is so important. This is like, now we're going into higher level thought of sales, persuasion, and influence. It's, how many times have you gotten a, an argument with your significant other or somebody really close to you, and it's like two people talking at each other, right? That's all we're doing is like, I say my position, then you say your position, then I repeat my position in a different way, and, and, and there's like, we're colliding, right? We're not actually listening. We're not making any, any progress because we're not really paying attention to what they're feeling and what they're most scared of. And so I like to listen for clues. Are they scared? Are they pissed? Are they embarrassed? Are they anxious? Are they excited? Are they regretful? Are they overwhelmed? Understanding basic human psychology is people will run away from fear much faster than they will run towards pleasure. Some of, some of that is just you know giving them the excitement that they get a purge. They get to move on from something that's a problem and they get to hit the reset button. So you're painting that picture that there's a brighter rainbow on the other side of this. Let's just work together to get through this obstacle. It's, you know, it's yeah. just, it's a problem. And you should sell hard. You should have confidence in this because you know that you're the best and you're, you, what you're providing is the best option for them. You need to believe that. I mean, as a for instance, and I use this with, with sales staff, if I told you, I'll give you a $10,000 bonus, $10, bonus if you close this deal by Friday, or, I said, if you don't close this deal by Friday, you're fired. Which one of those angles is going to get you to close the deal by Friday? If you don't close it by Friday, you may not get the bonus, but you keep your job. But if you don't close it by Friday and you lose your job, you're way more motivated to protect a loss than you are to gain yeah. a win. So it's really analyzing you know, where their weaknesses are and coming in with those solutions, but pointing out the fear and the pain of staying in this property. Maybe the, maybe the mortgage payments are going to add up if they keep hanging on to this price. And right now is the best time to cut and run. Yeah, just think of it like a, a, a teeter-totter, a seesaw, right? You've got positive benefits and negative issues. And the positive benefits is like building rapport and trust. The negative issues are like emotional roadblocks that the seller has. And so, yes, we gotta, there's invisible things. We gotta build the rapport, we gotta build the trust. We, we do that through the active listening and the storytelling and the, and the solving of problems and, and identifying the gap and circling over to their side of the table and making them feel like we're collaborating towards a solution and all of those things. The negative issues are more like, you know, what they're feeling in their state of mind. They're, they're stressed the hell out. What if I do a deal with you and five seconds later, somebody better comes along, right? That's what they're thinking. They're, they're thinking, you're a stranger. I'm not going to tell you what, how much I owe on my mortgage. I don't know you, bro. I don't give out personal financial information to strangers, right? I'm embarrassed to even say this. I'm, gonna, I'm, about, I'm going through a divorce. I'm losing my home. I'm losing my family. My, everything's falling apart in my life, and I'm embarrassed by this. Those are the types of things we got to work through.